While I've always been excited about my channel, now I'm starting to get really excited about my channel. One of the reasons is because last week I broke 200 subscribers and I think I'm now at 215, which is super exciting and awesome. So thank you all so much who have taken the time to subscribe and watch my videos and follow me along this journey of building a YouTube channel. And also because I'm finally starting to get some more recommendations or suggestions of ETFs and stocks that I should look at. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at buys, which is a request from Monsieur Blame. Very sorry if I did not say your name correctly, but let's go ahead and roll the intro so we can jump right into this. Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me today. My name's Matt, and as I mentioned in the intro, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the ETF, buys. Ticker symbol is B-U-Y-Z. So per usual, I just wanna start off with some background information and give you some context about this investment. So Buys is an ETF from Franklin Templeton, which is a company we have not talked about before on here. And I believe this fund started earlier this year. I wanna say it was in February of 2020. It's appropriately named the Franklin Disruptive Commerce ETF because it invests in e-commerce companies. I've been noticing a trend, a little side note here, of a lot of people seem to be naming their funds something disruptive. So my guess is that is probably a word you'll be hearing a lot of in the near future, especially in the finance world. The fund objective is to seek capital appreciation by investing in companies that are benefiting from the transforming, or tr sorry, transformation in e-commerce space. So let's start off this episode by taking a look here at the numbers for buys. And this week I did decide to compare it to ARK F for a few reasons. One, because this is a company I've done, or ARK is a fund that I've done a review on already. And it just will help kind of paint the whole picture for what these numbers actually mean. I think doing comparisons, especially when it comes to ETFs, really just helps you have a better understanding for how the expense ratio lines up, how the amount of holdings lines up, asset under management, all of that good stuff. And I also chose ARK F because these are very similar companies. I'm sorry, these are very similar ETFs with a similar investment strategy. So I just felt it was a good fit to compare these two to each other. And this will be a quick section here too. So we could see trading at almost the same price. So nothing crazy there, you know, kind of six in one, half a dozen in the other. Uh, the expense ratio, we can see buys is a little bit more favorable. And I'm gonna touch more on the expense ratio later but 0.5% compared to 0.75, obviously buys would have the upper hand. So let's take a look here at the asset under management because this is what actually stood out to me the most. We can see here that buys is much smaller than ARK F by about like $502 million. Now that's something that could correct itself in the long term, but it was just something I felt worth pointing out that this is a very small fund. There's funds that I've invested in that have over a billion dollars in assets, usually a hundred million. 16 million is definitely one of the smallest ETFs I've seen. Now, I generally don't look at smaller company ETFs, but so that might be why I'm saying it's one of the smallest I've seen. But just shy of 17 million AUM for an ETF is a very small ETF. And the number of holdings, this is actually something I liked. I liked that buys is a little bit better diversified than arc f is now that's not always a good thing and that can hinder performance but in general i like to see just a broader exposure if i'm buying an etf because i personally feel i just get better bang for my buck if there's more companies inside of that position so i didn't mention this earlier but the, another reason why i chose to compare it to arc f is because it is also a relatively new fund arc f is about a year older than buys is that being said, on the grand scheme of things, one year is not going to make a difference if we're looking or when it gets time to be looking at like a 10 year performance or a 15 year performance. So just another reason why I felt this would be a good comparison. And you guys should know me. I don't really like charts, but I do think they just help give you a visual understanding for performance. And so I did find this chart here that shows the relative performance for buys compared to ARCF, buys being the blue, ARCF being the green. And we can see the performance is almost the exact same. Now, ARK F does have a higher return rate than buys does. But that being said, we just have to keep in mind that ARK F does have a year head start on buys. So an example there to help you understand that would be they both invest in Mercado Libre. But ARK F had the ability to buy Mercado Libre probably at a cheaper price. And so 
Mercado Libre is going to perform the exact same regardless which fund it is. But if somebody had the opportunity to buy it earlier, then their overall return is going to look higher because they bought it at a discount or cheaper price. I hope that helps make sense. So while these performances are mirror images of each other, I just wanted to explain why you see ARCF a little bit higher on the return than you would with buys. So I also want to talk about now what I don't like about this fund. And again, you've heard me say this before. I'm not really a big fan of investing in new products. I like for them to be on the market for a little bit longer. This fund hasn't even been on the market now for about or less than a year. So that always is a little bit of a concern to me. Now, that being said, I enjoy the stocks that it has inside of it. I'll touch on that later. But I just like seeing more performance and a little bit better of a track record before putting my money into an investment. Also, the size of the fund, it's not a huge concern to me, but it's something worth taking into consideration because generally when you see a fund with a larger AUM, that does mean that it has a better track record for performance of being a quality investment. And so we can't totally hold this against that fund or against buys because it is a brand new fund, but it is small and I like larger funds. So just something worth again, taking a look at before putting your money into it. And lastly is the expense ratio. Now I did say earlier, the 0.5% is fine for an actively managed fund, but there was something strange I saw on their website and I'll pull that up so you can see it as well. Give me one moment. When I worked in finance, part of my job with helping people transfer accounts was looking at expense ratios to make sure when they transferred over to where I was working, they were getting a better deal or that it just made sense to make the transfer without them costing too much money. And so basically what I'm saying there is I've seen a ton of prospectuses, summary pages, all of that looking at expense ratios. And I have never seen a gross versus net expense ratio. And I had to look this up and really it doesn't sound like it's a, it's weird. I, I can't fully explain it, but we could see that buys has this gross expense ratio of 3.23% and a net expense ratio of 0.5%. So I did look at some of their other funds to see if that would have the same thing or if it mentioned this gross expense ratio. While it does mention this gross expense ratio on their other investments, this is the only one I saw where there's a difference. And that's a huge difference, 0.5 between 3.23%. So that does have me concerned. And I looked it up. Uh, if you look deep into their prospectus, it'll say like something about fees and waivers and it won't change until January 31st of 2021 or something along those lines. And that does have me concerned because a to me it sounds like there's a chance this expense ratio expense ratio could change and i wouldn't want to put my money into something you know in october of this year to then have the expense ratio increase to just an unexplainable amount of 3.23 percent in february next year making me have to sell and take on the short-term capital gains potentially so that is a concern of mine, and I'm really trying to get some clarification on that, but I could not find anything. I even contemplated giving Franklin Templeton a call and having an associate explain it to me, but kind of ran out of time and just did not do that. So that is strange to me, and it is 100% something I would want further clarification on before investing in this. Now, with that being said, I also do have a few things that I do like about this fund. And the first one has to do with the stocks that it invests in. I'm extremely optimistic, bullish, dovish, whatever you want to call it, on the kind of companies that this invests in. I think e-commerce is headed in a great direction. I love how creative some of these companies are getting with these investments. And I feel that buys offers you exposure to stocks that you don't commonly see in other ETFs. Uh, to name a few of them outside of the top 10, yes, we have exposure to Shopify, which is great. And I'm just reading this, sorry for looking at my screen. PayPal, Square, DocuSign. But even if we look outside of the top 10 holdings here, there's some other really attractive companies in here. And that could be ones like Etsy, Peloton, Spotify is in there, which I'm not 100% as optimistic on Spotify as I once was, but that's neither here nor there. Activision Blizzard, Salesforce, which recently just had a huge like $50, or sorry, $50 billion increase in their market cap. And so I really like these companies. Now, like Salesforce, you'll probably see in ETFs out there, but Zynga, the um, 
app maker for like games on your phone. You know, they're inside of this. And so I really like the exposure there. Uber and Lyft, not necessarily a huge fan of, but I understand why they're inside of this portfolio. And so again, just to reiterate what I just said, I think the stocks that they are investing in is very unique and not something that you would commonly see which is attractive to me as the investor. And I will say, if the expense ratio is 0.5%, will always be 0.5%, really no changes about that, then I'm okay with that. Again, I really think that 0.5% for an actively managed ETF is a fair price to pay, and I'm okay with that. But if that does increase, or if there's any changes with that expense ratio and it gets more expensive, that would be a con again for me. So as long as it stays at 0.5%, I'm okay with the expense ratio, again, considering it's an actively managed fund, as well as for the exposure in the companies that you would receive with this purchase. So what are my final thoughts here? Well, per usual, I'd rather see this play out for a little bit before I decide to invest in it or not, and at least get a little bit more clarification on the expense ratio. As I was just mentioning too, the stock positions in here are really attractive and that can offer an incentive to many investors because of what you get exposure with for just the fair price of $43 a share. And I will say, if you're debating between this and ARK F, first off, I won't tell you which one to do because that would be advice and it's really up to you to decide. But what I can say is I don't believe it's necessary to own both of these because they do have very similar investment companies and I do always tell you to make sure you minimize the amount of overlap you have between your investments. And that is definitely something you'd experience if you own both ARK F and buys. But if it helps you pick one, the big difference I've noticed between these is ARC funds in general, and also ARC F included, tend to put a lot of emphasis on one company, and then they just put little bits into the rest of the companies inside of their fund. Where I think Frankie Temps has done a much better job of putting just equal amounts into different companies. Now, yeah, it puts a little bit more into some than others, but it's not like an 11% for the number one holding and then a 3% for the next holding. This goes like 6.1, 5.9, 5.8, 5.7 5 for the way it's weighted. So I like that a little bit better as well. Maybe they haven't rebalanced or haven't really had to make any changes yet to the fund, but I like seeing a little bit more of an even distribution than having such a hyper focus in one and then spread out across a few others. Because if I'm gonna put so much, you know, more than 10% of the amount of capital for the ETF into one stock, I'd rather just own the stock outright than have to worry about what the other companies are doing. So hopefully that'll maybe give you a little bit of clarification or will help you make a decision when it comes to which one of these you would own. But again, I just don't feel it's necessary to own both of them because they have such similar holdings. I hope you that, ugh. so I hope that you enjoyed this video and hope you enjoyed my review of buys. Thank you, Muncie Blaine, for the suggestion. And as always, if any of you have any stocks or ETFs or even mutual funds that you'd like for me to take a look at, please leave that in the comment section down below and I'll happily do so. But I guess we'll just go ahead and end it here. So if you like this video, I just hope that you consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe, please feel more than free to do so. I always appreciate it. And like I said, we're slowly climbing up there. I still am seeing that about 90% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So nothing I'll get too upset over. But if you haven't subscribed yet, just please consider doing so. If you found this helpful and Again, have any tips for maybe a ways that I can make this more entertaining, please leave that in the comments below as well. I'm struggling to speak, so let me stop myself here and say, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. You could be anywhere in the world and you're right here with me, so I really appreciate that. But I will let you go ahead and enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you next time.